Smyrna was a little interesting town. It was right on the water. It was one of the specific trade routes that the Romans used. Um, but this town had a really unique history. This town was totally dead for about 400 years. From 700 BC to 300 BC, it was totally uninhabited. But then it was revived again. It was brought back to life. And now it was this flourishing trade town. It was an unbelievable place to be. There was a lot of wealth to be had, lots of commerce to go. They also had really rich soil to go along with their trade routes in and out into the sea. Um, it was an amazing place to be, but for Christians, they were getting ready to face an intense time of persecution. Uh, now, most of the people were really, really wealthy, but because of the persecution that was going on, the Christians, they were really very poor. They were poor in all the world's earthly goods, but they were rich in Christ. Now, I can imagine being the pastor of this church as he gets a letter. I, I can just picture he comes up on the Sunday morning. He's talking to the congregation. Hey, guys, uh, you remember John? He was the elder over all the seven churches in Asia. He's had this revelation from Jesus while he was exiled. He sent the letter to us. Jesus wrote our church a letter. I can't wait to see what it says. Strike up the band. I can just picture them having this intense time of worship. And then the pastor gets up to read this letter to his church. Now, now I think this is really interesting. Jesus doesn't say any negative things to this church. It's the only church out of all seven churches that he, he doesn't say, but I have this one thing against you. There's no constructive criticism. They were a great, great church in the midst of a really, really tough situation. But as the pastor sits to open this letter from Jesus, it's not what we would call great news. He, he starts to read this and it says all these great things from their Savior. But in the middle of that place, Jesus says, you're about to be persecuted. There's a trial that's coming your way. And in the end, there's not really a rescue. <laughs> want to get rescued you might feel all alone you might feel like you're treading water and you just, your head is just sticking right above and you just gotta paddle paddle harder harder just to stay up uh, that's Jesus message for the church of Smyrna he says really tough times are coming I've got nothing bad to say about you as a church you're an incredible church but here's the thing you guys are gonna go through an incredible time of suffering you're gonna own it that's what the Greek word really means he says you're gonna possess suffering if anybody's going to have a handle on it, it's going to be you. There was this really poor church in the midst of a really, really rich area. And Jesus' message to them is, you're going to suffer for my name. You're going to go through trial. You're going to be locked in prison. And the trial's going to end when you're dead. But there's no rescue coming. That may sound like bad news, but really, Jesus has a great, a great spin on it. He says, instead of looking for an earthly rescue, you need to focus on an eternal reward. He says, here's the thing. Just like your town was dead for 400 years and now it's back to life, uh, you're going to die. But that's not the end of the story. I'm going to bring you real life, eternal life. He says, the instant that you stop suffering, you're going to be with me. I've got a victor's crown to give you. And that's way better than any earthly, earthly rescue could ever be, this eternal reward. So his message to them is just stay faithful. Just keep treading water. Just keep going. He says, you know, when God doesn't come and rescue you from the midst of a trial, it's not proof that God doesn't love you. It's proof that he wants your life to be a picture of Jesus' life. Jesus said, I know what it's like to suffer with no rescue in sight. You remember when I was on the cross, I suffered, I died, but that wasn't the end of the story. I came back to life. And you're suffering right now, Smyrna. You're gonna suffer big time. You're gonna die but I've got an even better reward at the end of it all. So you just keep staying faithful. You know, Smyrna, their name really meant fragrant. It was, it meant myrrh. It was a fragrance that came out when you crushed up some special spices. Jesus says, Smyrna, there's more glory in you going through this trial, staying faithful, you being crushed, 
that the fragrance that's going to come out of that for the lost world around you, that's better than any rescue could ever be. You're going to have more of an impact. People are going to look at you and say, how in the world are they able to live for Jesus in the middle of this really horrible marriage? How in the world are they able to live for Jesus in the midst of this trial? How in the world are they able to live for Jesus when their finances are so poor? How in the world are they able to live for Jesus when they're going through cancer this way? And people will ask you for the reason for the hope that you have. It's not that rescue's coming. It's that you have a reward that lasts forever and ever and ever. So today, I guess my question to you is, are you in the middle of a trial? Maybe it's time to stop looking for rescue and start looking towards your eternal reward. Either way, you stay faithful and God will bless you. Right now, your secret leader is just going to talk to you about some questions you're going to read through the scripture. And we're going to ask, how are we like the church at Smyrna? What can we learn?